nothing ventured, nothing gained. Today we'll talk about people who risk their lives every day to save others, those are sappers. Today, we will learn about improvised booby traps and how to deal with them. Demina's best friend, the EOD robot. Two against a landmine, who is going to win? And we'll try to use a bathtub as a personal protector. This will be a real blast. Sapper is the word of French origin, which means to dig. They were the part of combat engineer troops, and their first instruments of labor were the shovels, like this one of 1915. For the first time, the word sapper appeared in the 17th century as the name for soldiers who dug tunnels and ran enemy fortifications to destroy them. In 1678, in France, sappers were separated into special troops and units. Later, in addition to damaging enemy fortifications, they performed a number of other tasks. Dug trenches for covert approach to enemy positions, created their own fortifications on the front line, provided the crossing of rivers and swamps, organized supply lines and restored infrastructure. The function by which the sappers are known today, diffusing landmines, missiles and shells, was mastered by those units in the early 20th century. We are in Kamyanets Podilsky, in the only demining center of the Ukrainian armed forces. The city has always been a center of historical events. In certain periods, it was Hetman's residence and hosted military elites. And now, the professionals who are trained here are those who create new pages of the Ukrainian history. The education itself is taking place at the training ground. Every year, on our planet, unexploded ordnance kills about 25,000 people. It is an equivalent of two army divisions. Specialists have to deal with at least 700 kinds of landmines and explosive objects. Sapper's training ground, as well as any training ground, is created specifically to train the beginners and hone their skills to perfection. Here, the trainees have a chance not to pay with their lives for their mistakes, but to learn from them. Here, the future D-miners are trained to handle IEDs, improvised explosive devices, and the so-called infernal machines, the only purpose of which is demolition. For someone, this is a book, but for others, a murder tool. An improvised explosive device, IED, is a self-made and ready-to-use ammunition. It consists of a detonator and explosives, TNT, plastids, or other means that are easily found on sale, such as safety matches or gas. The IED category also includes any industrial or military explosive device that contains some self-made elements. A D-miner is not a cat, he doesn't have nine lives. So beginners are learning their explosive trade and are trained to avoid deadly mistakes under the mentorship of experienced instructors. Oleg is one of them. Oleg, what are we studying here? In this training site, we work through the following problem, the triggering of an explosive object by double impulse fuse. During the dismantling of the old abandoned roadblocks, recaptured by our army, dissembling of old tires and waste may cause triggering an explosive device with double impulse fuse. You can see it here. When the load is removed, there is a contact closure and an explosive object is triggered. The most common kind of trap is a mine dam or an improvised obstacle. Let's have a look at a simple example. Tripwire is attached to one of three branches dumped into a pile with others. 
If you move this timber, the septum is pulled out. That causes contact, closure, and therefore an explosion. Tripwire is the most common thing that sappers have to handle. What do we have here? A door? On this object we are working on, checking the buildings for improvised explosive devices. That is when the sapper gets inside. He opens the door and faces the tripwire and grenade. What we see now is the drill to clear the tripwire with the grenade on the door. D-miners should be very careful and cautious. After all, this extremely noticeable tripwire might be put there only for distraction. Improvised explosive devices hidden in the drain pipes and triggered by a contact sensor. That is, during the passage of vehicles, the pressure sensor is triggered and explosive, which in this case is simply filled into a fuel canister, detonates. Mining and demining is a difficult thing, thus it is very interesting science. Deminers often have to work out in the field. Minefield, that is. Minefield, part of the area with explosives installed. Minefields could be anti-personnel, anti-tank and mixed. They are hard to cross and they usually don't need any personnel for service. An efficient, advantageous and therefore a very widespread barrier. Also, fake minefields are widely used, which are usually marked with the signs mines. But figuring out if this is really so is the enemy's problem. The variety of anti-personnel mines is impressive, and today we will check on three main types, PMN, MON 50 and MON 100. Anti-personnel mine, engineering munition designed for the destruction of enemy manpower. There are two main types, with traumatic and lethal effect. The first kind is designed to cause injury. The device is supplied with explosives exactly sufficient to tear off the victim's limb. Thus, a wounded soldier is incapacitated and becomes a burden to his unit. Fragmentation mines have a different purpose, to cause as much damage to the enemy as possible. This ammunition is able to destroy a single unit of up to 10 people. The anti-tank mines are divided by the way they are meant to damage the tank, to destroy its tracks, bottom or side armor. These mines detonate only on impact with massive armored vehicles and they are not triggered by people. This man in a balaclava is a demining instructor. Every day he looks into the eyes of danger and teaches his subordinates to do so confidently and professionally. To make a visual demonstration, let's set up and then defuse the mine. Mikola is the specialist of this branch and he will help us with this. Hi Mikola. What will we set? Now we will set an anti-personnel pressure action blast mine. PMN Anti-personnel pressure action blast mine. It can be planted both on the surface and in the soil, even in the snow. Since 1997, anti-personnel mines are banned. In Ukraine, they are destroyed in accordance with the norms of a relevant program. Unfortunately, terrorists do not respect international conventions, so our deminers often have to deal with this type of munitions in the east of our country. Anti-personnel pressure action blast mine. Casing plastic. Weight 400 grams. Charge weight 100 grams. Diameter 12 centimeters. Height 54 millimeters. Sensor type pressure action. Operating pressure 8 to 25 kilos. Operating temperature range minus 40 to plus 50 degrees centigrade. Durability up to 10 years. 
Neutralization impossible. To make the mine completely operational, one should remove the safety cap and put the fuse in. For the miner's safety, the distance arming mechanism is used. Once the ring pull is removed, the steel wire cuts through a strip of lead and the mine gets self-cocked. To be able to detect and clear mines, one must know how they are set. We do it gently to drown out. Everything should be done very gently to avoid any telltale signs. We are digging a hole of three to four centimeters. Before installing the mine, we tie the wire with a carbine to the ring pull so we could pull it out after the mine is put under the layer of soil. We set the mine three to four centimeters deep into the soil. The top surface layer should not exceed two centimeters. After having the mine installed, we remove the ring pull with the help of a cord. Our mine is in a combat position. Mine clearance of a territory is a dangerous and slow work. To find mines, sappers usually use metal detectors and thin metal rods, probes, that they thrust into the ground at an angle of about 30 degrees. Under ideal conditions, within one day, a team of two sappers can demine about seven square meters. And there is only one way to defuse detected munitions, by detonation. There is no other technical possibility to disarm such munitions. That job is so smooth, so it requires nerves of steel and great restraint. Yes, perhaps. I can't wait till we get to practice. We haven't prepared a special box and you'll see even more than me. For the test, we needed volunteers. So we chose those two. One, as you can see, is protected by an EOD suit. And the other one is wearing a T-shirt. The following mine which attracted our attention is Mon 50. It is a Soviet anti-personnel mine designed to disable enemy troops. The explosion projects metal balls or cylinders in a given direction. The height of effective sector is from 15 centimeters to 4 meters in the marginal range. Lethal range up to 50 meters. Type, fragmentation mine of directional effect. Weight, 2 kilos. Weight and type of charge, PVV, plastic explosives, 700 grams. Number of fragments depends on the equipment, 485 cylinders of 550 balls. Width, 66 millimeters. Length, 226 millimeters. Height, with legs folded, 155 millimeters. Technical specifications tell us that the marginal lethal range of fragments is 50 meters. It is at this distance from our volunteers that we place our mine. And then, everyone to the positions. A shattering explosion. Splinters are flying with supersonic speed, so the guys get hit even before they hear the sound. The land is literally plowed by the blast. A great way to cultivate your lawn. Let's have a look at the mannequins. A t-shirt obviously makes a poor protection from fragments. Here we see a wound right to the heart. The protected one was more fortunate. All fragments remained in the suit. None pierced it through. A modern anti-blast suit protects from all damaging effects of explosion, including shockwave. The set includes a protective jacket and pants, helmet with armored glass, Kevlar or Nomex gloves, mine-protecting boots, and additional armor panels to protect the most vulnerable parts of the body. Modern EOD suits of highest category are mandatorily equipped with built-in voice communication and climate control systems. Besides, the EOD operator can communicate with the post only through wired transmitter, because the radio signal can trigger the mine fuse. But still, no EOD suit, however reliable, can guarantee survival. Therefore, to protect D-miners, special EOD robots are used. 
The robots of the demining center are American. For almost a year, they work side by side with our EOD specialists. Robots are guided from a distance by a remote control or a joystick-like device. The cameras of EOD robots are operated the same way. One of the means to dispose of a suspicious object is hydroblow, which is part of the EOD robot. It destroys the explosive fitments without detonating the charge. It works so softly that even the windows remain intact. Meet Stanislav. Stanislav is a pilot of the robot Sapper. It's very interesting work, so we'll let Stanislav tell us about it himself. This robot is a robot scout. It is designed for the inspection of suspicious objects, checking the vehicles, and also for the simple tasks, like bringing the charge for the disposal of suspicious objects. He can make the moves like rising or moving something. Also, this robot has proven himself very well in the east, with the inspection of premises. With his assistance, we cannot just have a look around this object, which is usually done by men with the risk of their lives. We can discern, we can increase or reduce the size of a picture or highlight it. If we really found something that is not safe, we can move and transport it. Is it hard to learn to be a pilot of such a robot and control it? Robot is an instrument like a metal shukach. The robot is a tool, such as a metal detector or any other instrument, like a sapper shovel. It is a tool. To control your robot, you need to understand what you need to do. Try to perform the work remotely, without endangering a human sapper. Can you show me how to handle it so I could try it myself? Do you think I can manage it from the first try? Yes, we'll try. If you know what you are doing, operating the robot itself is not complicated. Great. I enjoyed it so much. Welcome to our training course. Yes, I think I can learn that. Thank you. Thank you. It was nice to meet you. I hope this robot will save a lot of lives. There is a popular and perhaps international advice to hide in a bathtub from shelling. They say a cast iron bathtub is shell proof. Is this true or is it just a common fallacy? While the soldiers were preparing for a test, our dummy got the scent of danger and decided to take a bath and change, just in case. Bad idea, especially when you are surrounded by the military. MON-100, anti-personnel controlled fragmentation landmine of directional effect, developed in the early 1960s in the USSR. During the explosion, it causes damage to a person or several people simultaneously with submunitions, 400 steel rod fragments of 10 millimeters in diameter. 
They are projected towards the enemy like a beam, 5 meters wide, and at a range of up to 115 meters. The probability of causing damage is 90%. Actually, operator triggers the explosion by remote control when the enemy reaches the kill zone or when the detonator sensor is touched. Case material, steel. Weight, 5 kilograms. Weight of explosive, TNT, 2 kilograms. The number of projectiles, 400 pieces. The diameter of casing, 236 millimeters. The thickness of casing, 82.5 millimeters. Operating temperature range from minus 40 to plus 50 degrees centigrade. Nothing boded trouble. A flock of deadly shrapnel covered our cast iron star. And when the smoke cleared, the myth was busted. No, a bathtub won't save you from a bomb. Check those huge holes. And our reckless bath lover is clearly in a bad way. The work of D-miners is not an easy one. It requires composure and attention. But when you overcome yourself and save somebody's life, you feel how rewarding this job is. And that EOD is a function that unfortunately won't lose its relevance anytime soon. Echoes of the war remind themselves even after 80 years. This was the program weapons. See you soon.